about that one time that I almost quit YouTube before I even really got to start. Hi everybody, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist, and I make dog training and pet nutrition content here on YouTube. And I've been making that content for almost three years now. Way back when, when I was first transitioning my channel from more of a hobby, random content, to what it is today, a resource for pet guardians wanting information on high quality training and behavior, as well as pet nutrition advice, I made a particular video that caused me to almost quit my YouTube career before any of the hits you know me for had a chance to come to be. Back in 2020, the dog training industry, specifically the positive reinforcement and force free trainers, were ablaze because Netflix was coming out with yet another dog trainer show. Dog training shows in general are extremely controversial. The dog training industry is 100% unregulated in the United States, so all you need to become a dog trainer from a legal standpoint is say you're a dog trainer and that's about it. So there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of myths, there's a lot of people blatantly going against expert recommendation and scientific research in the name of dog training. And while that makes for extremely unethical training practices and a lot of long-term harm for dogs and their guardians, it sure makes great TV. So that's where this story starts. I'd love to make a video here pretty soon about the problem with dog training TV shows and why you're going to be hard pressed to find a dog trainer who enjoys them, but today is just going to be a little taste of those sentiments. Before we get too far into this particular Netflix show and the YouTube video I made about it, I think it's important to take a step in talking about me and myself as a dog trainer. I consider myself a positive reinforcement and force-free dog trainer. These are words that you're gonna find within a certain sect of the dog training community that really emphasizes humane, effective, and science-backed training methods. That is my motto as a training company, effective, humane, and science-backed. All things that you should be looking for in a dog trainer. Ultimately, words are words. There's no regulation. People can call themselves whatever you want. But generally speaking, those are terms that are used by a lot of the very knowledgeable trainers that do have a lot of certifications, go to a lot of conferences, and that I generally recommend and surround myself with. But at the time, back in 2020, these terms were pretty new to me. And that's an important part of this whole story. So let's just for a second jump back even further to 2018 when I was getting my very first training certification. The particular program really utilized LIMA, which stands for Least Invasive Minimally Aversive. And at the time, LIMA left itself open to a lot of creative interpretation of what least invasive minimally aversive meant. They've since updated their language to mean if you feel that you as a dog trainer have to use certain tools or certain methods that have shown to cause damage to the welfare of the animal, that means that your skill set isn't good enough for this case and you need to refer to somebody with more knowledge and more skill. At the time, and the way that I was taught back in 2018 from this particular program, was doing harm to a dog was okay as long as you tried everything else first. This is something that I personally don't agree with now, and it's not something that Lima supports either. They've spoken out about that outright. That being said, as a personal decision for me at the time, I took that all to mean I'm not comfortable doing intentional harm, even if it's a last resort. So if I feel like I'm getting to that point with an animal I'm working with, I'm going to refer out to someone more knowledgeable than me, and I figured out who in the area I was able to refer people to that would fit that description, as it should be. Through this program, they also put me in partnership with a mentor trainer, and through this program, it's supposed to be somebody who uses positive reinforcement training methods um, that's in line with what they're teaching. I came to learn was this particular trainer um, used prong collars on almost all of the dogs they worked with and had their own product of slip prongs that they would sell and create for their customers. At the time, I needed to get through this mentorship in order to get my certification, and quite frankly, based on what I was taught at the time through the program I did, 
prong collars and slip chains were okay if you tried everything else, but certainly something that I don't agree with today. And in hindsight, I wish that I would have spoken out about it at the time. But we live and we learn. All this to say, I know how prong collars work. I know how slip chains work. I know how e-collars, shock collars, stem collars work. All of that, I've, I've known the function of them and how they supposedly work for the entirety of my dog training career. So Netflix releases the new dog training show and immediately all of the peers that I had found in the positive reinforcement training realm start uh, buzzing about how Netflix is creating another show with another harmful dog trainer using harmful methods. And this time it was in a pandemic where a lot of people were getting a ton of pandemic puppies and trying to train them themselves at home using this potential show from Netflix, as well as this trainer was launching online courses on the heels of their Netflix show. All of this happening along with kind of my first glimpse into all of the research and scientific studies that have been done into animal learning and welfare caused me to make my very first very specific dog training behavior video for YouTube. I was so proud of this video. I spent literally weeks going through their website and their social media to find examples of the things I was talking about, of the techniques that were being used and how they were harmful and even showing, you know, pausing the video, zooming in, showing body language examples of the dogs and showing how if they just literally didn't do two things, it would have been a fine example and the dog would have learned just as well, if not better. And I was extremely proud of this video. I thought the thumbnail looked good. I made sure the SEO, the search engine optimization was fantastic so that it could reach as many people as it could because I didn't want this to be another Caesar Milan. Just blatantly, we can avoid that as much as we can. And all of this worked because within 24 hours, it 1000% got more views than any of my videos had prior. And this particular video got more views more quickly than my most popular video on my channel did, the best and worst dog foods video that I'm sure all of you have seen at this point. Had I kept that video up, I'm sure the views would have been substantial and it would have made me a decent amount of money if we're being totally honest. However, it was popular with the wrong audience. Turns out I did a great job marketing that video because it was shown to people who were watching the actual Netflix trailer for this show. It was top in the recommended and a lot of the people who were viewing that video were typically older men who you could tell from the comments didn't actually know anything about animal behavior or training in like a academic sense, um, but had a dog when they were growing up or had a couple dogs now that they've trained themselves. So they think that they're, they were pretty competent in what they were saying and more knowledgeable. Um, and quite frankly, as a young woman in pretty much any industry, you kind of get used to things like that but this was a lot all at once. And just a frame of reference, I was like 20 at the time. I had a very developing brain that could not handle that level of criticism, let alone the frustration from knowing that these people were very confident in what they were saying and also very incorrect and making very incorrect assumptions about me and I couldn't really do much about it. So within, I think, 24 hours, the video was privated. And honestly, I'm kind of bummed that that video couldn't stay up because I, again, made a lot of really good points. It would have been a very informative video had it stayed up, but I could not handle the criticism because if it was valid criticism of people pointing out things, showing studies, citing sources, that's totally fine. And I always recommend if you guys find anything that you have questions about or criticisms for a video that I make and you have stuff to back it up with, I'd love to see it genuinely. But if you're just pulling things out of nowhere that have been regurgitated myths for the past 30, 40 years, I, I don't wanna, it's... 
we don't need it. Because of all of the criticism that I was getting from this video and all of my frustrations, I stopped making behavior content for a very long time. I took a break of a couple of weeks off of making videos after I was feeling really, really good about it and used that time to create, you know, that dog food video, the one you've probably all seen that started the whole series of Pet Nutritionist Ranks the Best and Worst Foods. So ultimately, it turned out fine and those videos did really well and I continued to make a lot of nutrition content but for three whole years I haven't really ever said much about dog training or behavior and if I did it was fun little things here and there that weren't supposed to cause a lot of controversy. Now I've gotten to the point where I've said a lot of things about nutrition and there, I still have a lot to say about pet nutrition and there's still a lot of videos that I want to make. But we're at a point where there's a lot of advocacy work that I do on Instagram that you guys are all very supportive of that I would like to start taking back over here to this channel. Ultimately what I've found with working with different clients is there is a lot of misinformation when it comes to dog training and people really do want to do the absolute best for their pets and with all of this misinformation and different opinions of people, it's hard to sift out what's actually true and what's scientifically valid and what's, again, just regurgitated myth. So this is a loose story of the time that I almost quit YouTube before I even really got started and kind of a glimpse into where the channel's going to be going in the next couple of months. I still want to do plenty of nutrition content, don't get me wrong, but we're looking at more of a holistic approach here when it comes to animal wellness. So we're going to talk about nutrition, we're going to talk about behavior, I'm going to talk more about training, and I hope that you guys are here along for the ride and learn a few things. This is also my second time filming this particular video um, because I'm expecting it to go rough dog training methods can be very controversial for whatever reason and so I'm sure the comments on this video are going to be a, more of a mixed bag than I'm used to on some of my other videos. So if you enjoyed this video give it a like and stay tuned, make sure to subscribe so you can stay tuned for all of those future dog training and behavior videos that we have coming down the pipeline. If you have any questions about anything that I've said in this video or about anything that you've heard in the realm of dog training, feel free to leave those down in the comments below and it can inspire a future video. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.